I want to ask about why it's lower cased titling. That's a great question. You know, that's the first time I've ever been asked that question. So the reason the title is lower case is because the film is based on a poem and I wanted to honor the language of a poem and so I thought that by making it lowercase it felt like it was in the body of a poem. And I also didn't want to capitalize because especially with this film and the native landscape, I think that capitalization puts a title on it and it's it's almost a it's almost a way of colonizing language. And I didn't want to do that specifically for this film. I love that response. I'm glad I asked that question. Um, so first time I've ever answered that. So <laughs> thank you for letting me find my way in that. <laughs> um, what, what, why did you make this movie? What, what has motivated you to make this movie? Um, more than how it happened, the why aspect, because I, I think that gets to the heart of what we get to see. Mm -hmm. I started um, filmmaking, this is my second film. My first film was done with a drone and a phone on my family's farm in Lewisburg, Kansas, and in its entirety. And I shot that over the course of the year. And the only part of the farm and the land that I did not film Film was the native prairie remnant and I gotta remember on my camera I'm talking like I'm on radio um, and so really that film was a springboard to the other as, as any of my creative projects are one is the springboard to to the next or an idea or some fragment um, leads me to the next next thing and so I really wanted to go back to the prairie I wanted to go back to the land I feel like um, when we return to the land, we return to our power. And so really returning to my homeland and honoring that and revering that um, as I'm dealing with a lot of um, transitions in my family, death, life, um, rebirth, ideas of regeneration, um, that took me back to this, um, this landscape, this ecosystem that is so vital and is disappearing. Um, and so I really did it as a way to revere the land that I'm from and revere what is lost and in a way eulogize this ecosystem. It's mostly gone. And um, I get a lot of questions about people wanting, what can we do to preserve it? What can we do to conserve it? You know, 3% of it remains. Um, it's by and large it's gone it's in preserves but i think in bigger time we will see transformation um but we won't be around to see it you know the prairie erupted from what was once a shallow sea um a whole new ecosystem so when this is long gone there will be a new ecosystem that arises out of this and i wanted to commemorate this time this this landscape in this time these people that's why i did it it seems like nature's only enemy is man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how do we like, how do we as man not be the idiots we've been? Like, how do we, I won't ask you how do we conserve the remaining 3%. I'll ask you, how do we know what to cultivate when it does go away and we have something else that's there? Are we equipped for losing even the 3% there or the swamplands down in Florida or whole islands in other I mean, we're losing so much. We're losing so much. I, I, this is a weird, scary time because of it because it's the first time we know exactly why we have done all of this. And yet we're not, I don't know if it's politics or whatever, but we're not having the, the arguments of, God, we got to step on it. We got to do something more. Yeah. Your film shows this beautiful thing that it won't be here probably before our lives end even. And that's scary. Well, it is scary. I, um, you ask a lot. Um, <laughs> I think that what we can do is first become aware. Mm -hmm. And so I think the film is a way of make, is a way of um, bringing people's attention to the ecosystem. And I think as a people, recognizing our interdependence, not only on uh, you know using the prairie as an ecosystem, 
there are only certain types of insects and butterflies and birds that can live on the prairie ecosystem. And when it's gone, that takes out all of these other um, living living things. Um, and everybody does their part. And so I think that just, you know, where we are now as a culture, we're just so disconnected from the whole. We're individualist, specifically that's amplified in capitalist American culture. Um, but that's where we are. That's where we live. And um, we have to learn to be reverent of the lands that we are stewards of more so than just being owners of land but working in relation with land it is not man's dominion over you know the earth will exist after we are gone i mean we are we are small potatoes in the big sea of deep time um I think we can only cultivate our awareness and really pay attention to our community and revere that which we have and realize our place in our interdependence with all mankind and all the species and landscapes. Your film allows us to... Boy, I'm a real, I sound like a wet rag. <laughs> Oh, we'll, we'll get to Where's a happy the moment. joy with this guy? No, we'll get to the happy part. I'm, I, <laughs> this might be a happy question. We'll go with this. Um, when I was watching this film, um, I felt transported to the visual that you were trying to amplify. I, I loved how soothing it was mm. watching your film. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of films at the festival. I can't say they're all sm smoothing and fun and uh, just calming. Um, when were you aware when making it that you wanted it to be comfortable to watch this? Like it's not, it, it doesn't come across as what we've just been talking about is this doom and gloom. It comes across as we need to capture this beauty and protect it rather than we're all going to die. <laughs> well, people don't listen to that. Yeah. People don't listen to people don't listen to facts. People don't listen to science. People have not heard, heeded the warnings of um, Earth and its, you know, the Amazon rainforest. It's disappearing. I mean, we've known this since we were grade schoolers. I mean, you know, it's been it, it's been in the news for a long time. We're not paying attention to it, and so. What I realized was that facts and figures don't work and beating people over the head with information, it's not going to change people's minds. But what I found, especially specifically in my home county, which is a red state, a red county and a red state of Kansas, many people on the conservation board of directors are um, red state voters. And so I didn't want to go this tact of like, we saved this, you know, because then it's like, it, this is an environmental movie. This is a lefto pinko commie who is trying to push their liberal environmental tree hugging ways against me. And I found if you just focus on the nature that people exist in, allowed them the space and the dignity to make those connections without being heavy-handed about it. Show them exactly what it is to revere. Um, there's one shot in my film that I particularly love, and it's at the end of the flower sequence, the very first sequence, and I've shown all these flowers and this beautiful, you know, it's music and everything, and then it finally lifts, and you see it's a flower that's on the roadside that cars are driving past. We drive past it. We don't take time to enjoy what's under our feet um, and I think it's just because we don't have awareness we don't know that that flower belongs to this greater ecosystem and that it is a survivor <laughs> it's a lone survivor and a remnant of the atrocities that were done against the land and the people of the land are you able to look at the prairie and see it the way you did as a child I didn't see it as a child because I didn't know. I didn't know that it was this specific thing. You know, um, we baled the hay just like we baled the hay on um, pasture. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't note the difference. Um, it wasn't until much, um, much later when I was like, this feels different. Stepping out onto the prairie, it, 
it does look different. The flowers are different. It, the flowers are always changing. It's alive. It's so vital. It's not just corn. It's not a corn field. It's not just a wheat field. This is a diversity and it, it's palpable when you step out onto it, which is so crazy. I love to take my shoes and socks off and stand on it. Um, it's like, it's so well rooted and deep rooted. If you ever get the chance to see the root systems of the tall grass prairie, they extend for, you know, 20, 30 feet. It's crazy. Um, and that's, but w once they're tilled asunder, you can't reroute, right? Um, but there's something so connected in that that I think connects us to our deep time and those times that existed when it was a shallow sea. Um, I think there's something really amazing about that. that I got really far afield from your question, but um, I recognize that as I aged more than I did certainly growing up there. And you answered it. I, okay. I, yeah. Um, I'm overthinking it as I'm No, talking. you're fine. Um, Having it shown here at Tall Grass, you gonna take a minute? No, I'm gonna turn my phone off. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, you're good. Um, I feel like this festival understands what you wanted to show, and they programmed it accordingly. How important is a festival experience in showing a nature film? Is it? Do you think there will be an impact? Do you think? Showing it here will be something that is a positive uh, for just even showing people what you're hoping people will open their eyes to. Um, so is the, is the festival the perfect route for a perfect place yeah. for this? I don't know that it is. Um, nothing against the festival. I mean, you know, it's the, the, the namesake of the festival is the subject of my film so I think it's a real natural fit and I am glad to bring it you know attention to more people it screened yesterday at noon um, you know there were no more than probably 25 30 people in the in the theater which is no no shade against anybody but um, I would rather it be out and available to the public so more people can so more people can see what it see what's so vital and right underfoot. Um, I think the festival is more limiting for for this type of um, film. I don't certainly regret being here. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of such a reputable, amazing festival. Um, and I don't mean, but to I ask. want to make it available to like the the Miami County Conservation District, to the land stewards. I want to make sure that they see it. I think it's more important um, for that audience to see this film than maybe directors or producers, because it's not a narrative. I'm not like running up, or you know, it's not a document documentary that I'm focusing on. You know, the black trans experience in KCK. You know, I'm not. That's not what this. That's not at all what this is. Um, it, it leads to, you know, I mean, being a part of a festival, being a part of the festivals that I've been in, it's laurels and it's kudos. And that goes on my resume and that helps me get funding for future projects that I want to do. And so I think that's the benefit of festivals is spe specifically where I am in my, um, where I am in my career. And these just happen to be the films that I've entered with. Well, the only reason why I asked is because I, I think what you were getting at, the audience seeing it, it, it needs a, an audience that can take that material and use it somehow. And I, I, I love that you stated that it needs to be shown to the municipal places. It needs to be shown to the people who can impact that land directly, yeah. um, not as a derogatory to the festival. I mean, we're here for Oh, the no, festival. not at all. I love the festival. I don't ever want to come across that way. <laughs> but I, I love that you brought up that you were hoping to get it in the faces of people that can make a change and a difference. Because I see this piece something, I mean, I hope this gets shown to kids. I hope it gets shown to people who in the community who can utilize this farmers the the local growers the grocery stores anyone who's involved in mm -hmm. the connection back to that tall grass right. that you so beautifully have shown us um, 
So thank you for answering that that way because I hope it didn't come. Oh, my question wasn't so weird. I, I, I that you answered it the way I hoped you would. You're only asking really thoughtful, great questions. Thank you. Um, how much growth did you? Co- get from making this film and completing it and putting it out into the world knowing that you've now shown at least a snippet of what you were hoping people gain a little knowledge of Mm -hmm. what did i get out of it yeah personally um Well, I definitely deepened my affinity for the prairie and for the landscape and a more and a greater mindfulness of interdependence. Um, this film started out as something else. It was going to be a documentary, a uh, pretty straight style documentary of the land, the prairie remnant landowners in Miami County, Kansas, of which there's like 20 and the largest percentage of them are all women. And I thought there was something really fascinating in that. Um, they're much older and then COVID hit and um, so I had to really scrap that idea because it wasn't safe to do interviews at that time. This was like spring of 2020. I mean, it's in the heat of the pandemic. And so I scrapped that idea and decided to focus just on the landscape itself. And so the every couple of weeks, I would run out to the prairie remnants that I had access to in my home county. And it was my safe place to be during the pandemic. I can't be indoors with other people, but I could be outdoors with this ecosystem that um, became... I know this sounds really, really wild, but it became its own sanctuary. It became its own kind of um, means of healing and health. Um, And that became very, that became, that became my relationship with it. It was a really healing um, and, and journey of wellness during that time. Is there any hopes to tell that other documentary in the future? Perhaps. Um, someone else just recently asked me that. I was at K-State and I showed the film a couple weeks ago and I, it was the first time I'd come out about what it had <laughs> been before. And people were like, that's a really good idea. Do you think about revisiting that? Um, I would. I don't know if it's a film. I feel like it might be a better storytelling podcast. Um, I don't know if film... You know, I captured so many filmic aspects of it, of like the prairie, you know, what was going to be kind of B roll. <laughs> um, I made my A roll. And um, I don't know if I'm going to make that film, but I feel like there's, there's a story there that needs to be captured. And if I were to do it, I'd probably do it as a limited podcast series. I started out in radio. It's the first thing I did. I wanted to get in radio. I loved radio. Uh, quickly realized it wasn't going to be my cup of tea. Had to get out of it. Got into film, got into other stuff. You obviously love both mediums. Um, which is your favorite? Oh, boy. I, um... David, I'm going to put you on the spot now. You know, I, I'd have to say sound. Um, I really like, I like radio and I like how it draws us in to participate more. It helps us, it just gives us enough guideposts that it makes us do creative work of imagination. And film, I think it can spell it out in much more articulately in much different ways. Um, it's like the difference between reading a book and watching a film, you know, the book is always better. Um, And I think, but it also calls in this co-creation. Radio demands more of you. And I like, I don't know if I'm ASMR or whatever, but I like how it sounds, Uh, (laughs) right? I like being, I like being (laughs) touched in in that auditory way. Totally get that, yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, As a radio guy, I'm proud to hear that because I I very much even though I always do this I I yearn for my radio time I love radio I love sound um 
Well, and sound was very important in my film. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was a huge component of it, of capturing the, like the opening credit is mm -hmm. like the landscapes. I just wanted to draw people immediately. It's like, what is this sound? It affects you differently. It brings you in before opening your eyes to, there's that first image of the flower. There's mm -hmm. the first cone flower. It's like, you just kind of like, what is happening? It's like the orchestra kind of queuing up. And I really thought of that. It's like, that's the entre act before the overture of the of the um, flowers. And I definitely want to emulate that. And there's an artist, um, this was just on CBS Sunday Morning, and she gets into sound. Her name is N Nikki Lint, I think. Um, and she does a lot of sound in soil. And I wanted to get really close and hear you know, I mentioned how it feels palpable. Like when you're on the prairie, you can feel it. Um, I think you can also hear it. There's a real music to it in the wind, how the wind blows through it um, that I that I also wanted to capture. I used multiple voices at one point during the root section when we go subterranean. Um, and I, I really thought of it as like this chorus of roots that were making their voices heard as they reached up and broke through soil. Now I'm really out there. <laughs> <laughs> what did you shoot all this on? What, 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 what equipment were you using? I shot it on a drone, my iPhone, and um, a, can a Canon um, DSLR. Okay. Yeah. As far really fancy. <laughs> you'd be surprised how many iPhones I've talked to. It's becoming their, their I mean drones are also becoming popular, but iPhone shooting is now a thing that's yeah. legit. It's legit. Um it looks good. God, it looks good. Thank you. <laughs> um I'd I'd love to just ask a personal question about now that I know you're a radio guy, um mm -hmm. what do you what are you listening to podcast wise? What do you, what, what things do you absorb to help you with your show, but also just as comforts for you? I don't know if I listen to enough things that comfort me. I mean, my favorite membership and my most used membership is my Spotify membership. Um, Mine too. I love listening to, I love listening to music. Um, so I'll maybe go there first. Um, I've been really into um, Kendrick Lamar's new album. I also really like a lot of 60s, early 70s um, gospel. Um, I just, at Format Festival, I fell in love with this band, The Marias, that I thought were fantastic. I've been exploring them more. I'm all over the map. Uh, I'm really open about all kinds. Of, uh, obviously, gospel and Kendrick Lamar, <laughs> Maria's. Um, I like music because it sets a metronome, you know. And I find a lot of editing a film is very much a choreography, and I think that you find that through exploring those beats and those movements. You know, I can tell my editor how to that I want, you know, 139 through 156 or whatever those time sequences, but I can do that myself or he could do that work for me and it'll come back different. Mm -hmm. And I it's like watching two dancers on a stage. One they're both doing the same moves, but you're going to pay attention to one or like the, identify with the fluidity. And I, I, I think that music has crafted my, a little bit of my process of filmmaking. Um, I got it a little far afield, but, um, as far as what other stuff I listen to, I love Adrian Marie Brown, um, social activist and author. And, um, I recently, I like, um, 10% happier. I like on being, um, with Krista Tippett. Um, on being is fascinating by the way. I love on being. Oh. Yeah. Um, she led me to a book I'm reading currently, um, by John O'Donohue. Um, I think it's called Walking in Wonder. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and then recently I just watched the Sandman series, and I also watched um, the rehearsal on HBO Max, and I'm still, like, really fucked up about that, thinking about um, how we use theater as a tool for 
developing empathy and gaming out scenarios um, in real life. Um, it really, I'm really fascinated by that show. Have you seen this? Yes. Uh, I think it's emotionally manipulative, <laughs> and I also think it's really, it's really incredible. And I haven't, I haven't stopped thinking about it. It, it sticks with you. It's very. It captures you. I, I don't know. It's it's wild. Yeah, I'm glad you watched it. I've been talking about it to other people. I'm like, will no someone <laughs> please, will someone please watch this so we can talk about that ending? And I don't even. The, oh my god, that kid and his, the, the the and the guy. Didn't see it coming. <laughs> Didn't see it. Don't, I know. And it's like when I'm talking about it to people, I don't want. I tell them like just the first couple episodes, and then I like kind of leave it there. Um. Yeah, that's what I'm listening to. I just started reading The Awakening, um, which I'd never read. That's new to me. That's what I'm into. Deborah, I kind of want to end it there. I think it's a sweet way to end it. I love it. The Awakening is our final line. Um, David, thank you for making this film and making the way you made it uh, as an audio guy. Like I said, it was soothing to watch. Mm. And as much as it is a tragedy to know what you're talking about, it's such still beautiful things. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to say also that you don't have to take this bait. Uh, I was approached by KCPT, which is our PBS in Kansas City, and they want to um, run both of my films um, starting next month. So it's going to get, you know, wider. Um, you know, people in the region, I think, will be able to connect more and see what it is that they're building their subdivisions <laughs> on or whatnot. So that's a cool thing. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dave.